moving on to the next thing. The Sopranos and Breaking Bad. I wanted to talk about these real quick because I'm a very, 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 very big fan of The Sopranos. I maintain that of the shows that I've watched, it's my favorite, and I also think it's right up there, if not the top, at the best done shows. I'm talking about from the cast, the supporting acts, but the camera shots, the storylines, I think it's the best show that I've ever watched. And I will talk about Breaking Bad, which is another show that I've watched. But I wanted to talk about the difference that I liked and similarities that I saw between these two shows. Because, I mean, if you if you look at Sopranos, I mean, let me pull up their cast. I mean, one thing that I think of right off the bat after seeing many of these these actors and actresses is a lot of them were in Goodfellas. That was one of the things that I remember. I remember seeing uh, Michael Imperioli, who plays Christopher Moltisanti. I remember seeing him in Goodfellas. And when I first watched this show, I was like, oh, what? Really? He's in the show? And I mean, there's a lot of lot of familiar faces and people that you can recognize, but I have to, I just wanted to talk about some of my favorite characters from this franchise and also the, the actors and actresses that I thought were, were the best played roles. And it, it, and then definitely overlaps with Breaking Bad. I would say the best actor and actress in terms of the roles they played, obviously you're going to say James Gandolfini, obviously. But I think Ida Tuturo, or Janice Sobrano, and Silvio Dante, played by Stephen Van Zant, those are my two favorite performances of the of this series, and it's very similar to Breaking Bad. Janice on the one hand is one of the few characters that I've seen in a in a TV show where I cannot stand them. I find myself yelling at the TV, being like, "You're you're a twisted son of a gun. You're a bad person." I get that with with Jana Soprano from the from the story, and I I bet I bet Ida Tuturno is a fantastic woman in real life sure she's awesome but in this show she has to change who she is and become this evil evil person who is only looking out for her own self-interests who doesn't care about other people i mean you i mean i'm watching the show right now so this is in my memory but just seeing how after tony her and tony's mother dies she goes and lives in her house, and when um, to- one of Tony's gumas tries to move in uh, and tries to start living there, she takes the girl's prosthetic leg, and the girl's left with only one leg to walk around with. Like, that's crazy. And the reason that she did that is, one, she's definitely mad about the whole house thing, but also on her mother's deathbed, she gave this whole bunch of records to this woman with the prosthetic leg. And Janice didn't like that. She didn't like that. She was very mad. She was very mad. And so in response, she took the girl's leg. And she said, well, if some things would be given back to their rightful owner, maybe the leg would show up. And I'm watching this and I'm like, what? Just the evil stuff. And then you see how she... I mean, I mean, I could talk about it for, for a very long time, but one of my... She is one of my favorite characters. Her and uh, Edie Falco, I think, are the two best females in this movie. You could also make a case for 
Tony's mom, Livia Soprano, played by Nancy Nancy Marchand. I believe that's how you say her name. But her, she's she's also another one that's like Janice, that's who's just awful. And I think it's really cool because you can see the similarities in Livia Soprano, Tony Soprano, and Janice Soprano. You can see how they get a little thing from their mom. And I think that's super cool because it's a TV show. And you can and they did really well with the with the characters in that aspect. And then the other person that I like, I think is for for own reasons, Stephen Van Zant. I think he did the besides Tony, obviously, I think he did my 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 favorite um performance. Look at this right over here. Steven Van Zandt, known as Little Steven or Miami Steve, is an American singer, songwriter, musician, producer, actor, activist, and author. He is best known as a member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. Plays guitar and mandolin. That's... That's... um. Yeah, let me stop the sharing. That's why I, I think this part is crazy. Because once I once I realize that, I was extremely surprised. And there's this Howard Stern video from 2021. How Steven Van Zandt got his role on The Sopranos from 2007. I'll definitely have to watch that, but for so i don't know if he went to acting school or did any acting classes or anything like that but for somebody who's in a band with bruce springsteen i mean you're probably playing arenas all over the country all over the world possibly and then to get a role on the sopranos which at the time was one of if not the most popular show but not only that you also had to play in a band. I mean, did he take a break from tour? Or were they not touring? Were they not playing at the time? I am not sure, but his character is pretty much like the right hand man to Tony Soprano, like right up there in the the mob, the mafia, whatever they are. And his character is phenomenal. I mean, he has his own things where he's like. Tony's sick after you get shot by his, his grandfather. And you got Stephen Van Zant, who's like, I don't want to rock the boat or I don't want to try and take over Tony. His wife is like, why don't you try and move up a little? I mean, if Tony's away, that means you'll be able to be right there. He's like, it's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. We're gonna get, we're going to get Tony better. And all this other stuff. And he's like having a really hard interactions with all these people coming to ask him. Be like, this guy owes me this much. And then the guy that owes him that much says, no, I owe you this much. And he just gets so out of his head trying to find a solution to this because he's like, what? I don't know. I don't know the answer. Uh, you do this. You get that much. Whatever. And he hates it. But not only that, throughout the entire thing, there are multiple times where he does these big grand performances in front of an entire group of people. And um, like the thing that he does from the the Godfather, he's like, they take me out and I pull them back in. Like, I think that was like in the first season that he did. And everybody's laughing and stuff like that. Like he's a very big part of of the story. I guess I wasn't a, a great example of that, but that's just something that I remember that was throughout the course of the show uh a big factor. I mean, he's the he's the right-hand guy to to Tony. And he's probably in the top 3, top 4 of people who get the most amount of screen time and have the most amount of lines. That's probably my guess. He's fantastic fantastic and especially because he's not a traditional actor he's a musician 
And that's and that's why I love love those two characters. I mean, it's so interesting and intricate and everybody's changing and nothing's the same. Love the show. Love the show. But now over to Breaking Bad. I really, really liked this show as well. A lot of people would choose this show over Sopranos, and I get it. But the one person I wanted to talk about was Anna Gunn, who plays Skylar White. This is one of the very few shows where, even more so than The Sopranos, where there was a character that I had a general, or a genuine, I should say, not a hatred of, but dislike. I disliked this character in, in just about every way possible. I thought she was annoying. I thought she didn't know what she was talking about, and she acted like she did. Uh, I felt like Walter White, played by Brian Cranston, has cancer, and he's trying to get enough money so he can make it. Or, or pay for treatment and that kind of stuff without having to, to let his family know. Because his family's having so many issues, he doesn't want to add to it. And he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. And he's very smart. But his wife is just creeping closer and closer to figuring out what he's doing. And as a viewer, I didn't want her to do that. I didn't want her to find out what Walter White was doing. And she just kept asking these nagging questions. She was always nagging. She was one of the most frustrating characters of any show that I've ever seen. And you're like, no, don't get closer. Don't get closer to finding out what he's actually doing. She sees Jesse Pinkman, played by Aaron, Aaron Paul. She sees... She starts getting closer and closer. She almost discovers the entire operation because if she discovers that her husband and this high school dropout are dealing meth and making millions of dollars, she's going to tell her brother. Um, Hank Schrader, played by Dean Norris, who's, I think, with the DEA. I think he's a DEA agent. She's going to tell him. And he's going to bust up the whole thing. And meanwhile, this guy's already getting close to what he calls this, this giant, super well-known guy that's dealing this crack. Or not crack, dealing this meth. So he's, he's closing in on Walter White. Now, this is much later in the show, but you're just like, no, Skyler, please do not uncover this. I don't want... This good guy, this good and bad guy, Walter White, from becoming a, a, a criminal and getting caught for his legitimate crimes. I'm not going to lie to you and say that he wasn't committing crimes. He was definitely committing crimes, but the issue is I would have rather to see him not actually be – put in jail for it. I mean yeah he's hurt a lot of people and killed some as well but it was just the 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 character of Skylar White where she was always over his shoulder looking over and you always felt this anxiety when she would come on the screen and you felt as though she's gonna mess it up somehow some way Walter's got his own stuff to worry about and she's just adding bs to it adding bs to it and I think is even more so than Janice, one of those characters where you just hate because you can, because you can tell that the, uh, Janice is much more of a bad person. Skyler is much more of an annoying person, but still, you just absolutely can't stand either of them. So I, I, I love these two shows, and hopefully, there's another show that comes out where there's another character like this because I love that. I love that an actor can can become a completely different person and make you hate them. And they can become this this thing where you're like, oh, I know what you're doing. You're, you're saying this because you want to get this reaction. 
or you're manipulating people and you're doing these things. And it's something you can see clear as day, but they're just acting. They're not, they're not actually screwing these people over. They're not actually taking somebody's leg, but you're like, that's something that a crazy person would do. And I just think that's one of the greatest parts of, of acting is these people who are able to change who they are. They could be the nicest person. I bet these are two very nice women. I bet they're the best. I bet they're fun to hang out with. I bet they're super nice. But they become these characters and you just hate and can't stand them at all. That's what I think, at least. That's my thought. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to say thank you to everybody who will watch in the future, watching right now. Um. Thank you very much for the support. I I don't know how many views we have on that other one. I know it's not about the views, but I don't want to be sitting in a room alone just talking to nobody. I want to have an audience and people that I talk with and interact with because I don't want to be the only one who's just talking. I'm in an apartment alone talking to a computer screen right now, but it's going to get uploaded and other people are going to watch it. What I want to turn this thing into is sitting down and having conversations with people like with the twitter thing for example having i'd love to have a conversation where i have those two ideas i'm not saying those are the only final two ideas those are two ideas that i have where i'm like hey, it could go this way or it could go this way and i'd love to have somebody on who could push back on those ideas and say well i actually think of this other idea where you would have these checks and balances and this and that other thing and things that I can't think of. So I do hope to get a lot more guests on the show. I had so much fun with James. And I think it's it's better when you do a podcast and you're speaking with somebody else rather than just alone without any pushback and just blurting things out into the mic. Because you might disagree with my takes even on the Sopranos and Breaking Bad, you might think they're a bad show. And I'd love to hear why, because maybe that could change my mind. And not that I know, I don't know many people who would say they're, they're bad shows. I know a lot of people watch, um, what's it, Better Call Saul. And I at, once I got done with Breaking Bad, I was like, all right, I'm done with that storyline. It wasn't anything against Better Call Saul, but I really don't watch that much TV anymore. And I didn't want to watch another another whole like five, six seasons of another show. But Sopranos is my number one. My favorite movies are Interstellar, Goodfellas, TV shows, um, SpongeBob, and Sopranos. I think SpongeBob is a very yeah, as popular as it is, even for adults. It's a very underrated show. Very underrated. The, a lot of the humor in it, even as you get up into the double digit seasons, they they have some humor. Obviously, once you get later there, there's not as much original storylines, but those are still very funny. But those early early seasons, late '90s, early 2000s of SpongeBob. You could watch it as an adult and find it very humorous. Very funny. I don't know. Definitely want to have more people on the show to, so I can dialogue with them and hopefully get my mind changed because I don't want to have the same thoughts and opinions be blurting the same thing out over and over again. That's not what I want to do with this. I want to evolve. I want to change just like I think all people should. You, there's definitely some things that you can hold firm and keep the same opinion on for many years. I'm not saying you have to change everything every day because I also think that's bad, but I think for the most part, you have to ask questions. If you have an opinion on something, whether it's political, whether it's a sports opinion, whatever, you got you to gotta question it constantly because you ask yourself a question, well, why is Michael Jordan really the best? Is it because he won six championships? Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. That that was a big reason why I had that opinion. Okay. Well, Bill Russell won 11. Oh, yeah. 
well, if I'm judging, but you see, you can kind of go through this train of thought where you're constantly questioning yourself and be like, why do you believe that? Or if you listen to, like I listen to podcasts and there are people that I disagree with all the time and they'll make a point and I'll be like, well, they're wrong because, hmm, I don't know why they're wrong. I'm not sure. And then maybe I could be like, well, they might actually be right. And that really helps to change my mind on many issues that I've had. Like I, that's, that's one of the things that helped me, I guess not help, but one of the things that changed my mind about Michael Jordan it was because I heard people tell stories and I watched obviously a, a lot of um, his playoff games, mostly his NBA finals, but hearing people talk about like the last dance, the last dance was awesome because I learned so much information about Michael Jordan. So I think it's really important for you to change your thoughts, change your opinions. I also think it's an important to, to show love to people that you disagree with. So if you disagree with me, Please show me some love. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, your weekend. Thank you very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.